changing now, so it's looking everywhere for you. Yes, people, what is happening? Welcome back to another vlog. We have got a packed out car to tonight because we've got my dad in the driver's, in the passenger seat. On our way down to Birmingham. So, Birmingham normally, great crowd, fantastic, very laid back. You know, you can kind of like pick on him, you can savage him. You don't really get the ump or get offended or anything, a fantastic crowd. So, got young Dave with us here. So Dachi, come right, it's St. David's Day, and a happy St. David's Day. Come right, Ambeth. Nice to see you all. And you'll be happy to know, or I don't know whether you'll be happy to know or not, but straight out of a cryogenic chamber from 19... 1974, <laughs> I would say, we've got Austin Powers' his son. Son of Austin Powers, Jack Ryan. Heading down to Birmingham tonight to a place called Macadown Sports and Social. Sold out well in advance. The guy who's running it, Paul Ryder, has been lovely to deal with. He's been to a show of ours before at Coventry in the Rialto Plaza, which we're going back to in April. Uh, looking forward to an absolutely splendid night. Uh, we've got all the cavalry with us. We're meeting Doug Carter there, who's on support tonight. Jack just had a uh, last minute night off, so he's decided to come along just for the banter. Uh, but he might get up and do five minutes, eh, Jack? As long as it's after me, he's not going on before me. He's staying on for an hour. I'm just I'm going on our face after Doug. Uh, by the way, we've just been in Starbucks. Got mobbed in Starbucks. Fella come over for a picture. And he wanted a picture of young Dave as well. So our fame is spreading everywhere, really. It's great. Vlogs are catching fire. Big thanks to everyone who's watching them. Let's get on the road to Birmingham. Feeling good? Feeling great. Doesn't get any better. So... Bath 2 is at 2.30, 3 o'clock. What a life we've got, all of us, that live, you know, down to Birmingham, something to eat, probably on the way, a cup of coffee, get into the venue, do the sound check, see the security, have a walk around the stage, walk around the room. When you're a comic, get the feel of the room, you know, you're feeling good in it. Let it sink in through your pores. It's going to be a fantastic night, going to be great. Sold out, they'll all be big, crazy Frankie Allen fans, it's going to be great. My son's here, so... Uh, Warning to keep away all the bar barmaids ah, in this ah. place. Keep away from my handsome son. So we are just driving down to Birmingham now. My dad's got the camera duties today. Anyhow, we've just been speaking about uh, the guy who's promoting the show said, could we charge five pound per ticket for the meet and greet and that would be given to charity. So dad, just flip it back on yourself and let everyone know what your thoughts on that Yeah, what well, I was thinking of, what he wants to do the guy, got a professional photographer there, got a take, he'll take all the pictures of people who come up to uh, meet me, what we call a meet and greet at the end of the night, shake their hands and have a little chat with them. But then he wanted to charge them a five pound to give the money to charity, which is admirable, you know, it's a good idea, I suppose. It's a good idea, I suppose, but um, the way I look at it, my demographic, all the lads mainly that come to see me, young men and some women, times are hard, you know, and that five pound could be a lot of money to someone on the way home, could be part of the taxi fare, um, get himself some chips or a kebab or something on the way home, so the way I look at it, it's a bit kind of like extortionist. I wouldn't do it, I don't want to do it, so we're not doing it. I'd rather they had the extra five pound in the pockets and we'll do the pictures for nothing. I don't know. I've never really thought of it that way of getting, you know, charging people. I'm not like that. Will's not like that, but... And it's just the economy as well. Everyone's watching all the money. What, everybody's watching, you know, what they're paying, what they're paying out, the expenditure. So, no, we're not going to do it. We're going to have a fantastic night. So, what we've kind of agreed on a compromise, the guy that's put this show on tonight, he's got this professional photographer to come in. He's going to do all the pictures without people having to take the phone out and sort of save Will a job um, or young Dave a job. And, and then what will happen is they'll all go up on Facebook, as it will. Yeah. And they can just take their own down, you know. So, that's the way we're going to use it. You know. Yeah, okay. Yes, people, we're out of services. This is the greatest boy band in the world, the trio. Frankie Allen, Young Dave, Jack Ryan, a.k.a. We used to be called Boyzone, but now uh, we 
train thought on it. Didn't want to do much filming in the car because obviously I was driving. So we are just in a service station. Uh, stopped off for a quick GF first as we call it. Yeah. But where are we? We're at Sandbatch Services. Now anybody who lives in Crewe and anyone who lives in Stoke, but strangers won't know, here's a good tip for you. If you're travelling down to Crewe from Liverpool or Manchester, Preston, anywhere up north, don't go down to Crewe, don't follow the signs for Crewe. Come off at Sandbatch then you're only four to five miles away on a little kind of a road otherwise you're putting about 10 15 miles on your journey looks half decent this gaff they've got a chosen noodles in here might be something that i'll graft um here's jack ryan or as i call him brazil for some reason how are you feeling lad you up this morning in the gym yeah so now i'm starving a little bit so we're gonna pick some decent we're gonna get some screen Hopefully they've got some nice scran in here. It's all McDonald's though, that's it. Nah, there'll be something else we can grab. Oh, I've been to this one before. Well, anyway, gonna go and get some scoff. They've got a nice Costa coffee here. So let's see what it's saying. So we are in Costa, in Samba Services. What have you ordered? Uh, I think a Wiltshire ham and uh, mature cheese, cheddar lard. Toasty. Lovely. And a nice cup of tea. I've got a chicken and bacon toasty on the way. Brazil's gone to get, or as I call him, Jack Ryan, getting huge, huge clocks there. Um, Jack Ryan's just gone to get a cheeseburger, and my dad's got a ham and cheese toasty too, so time to tuck in. Feeling good, having a good journey. Halfway there, great journey, weather's nice, all systems go for tonight. What have you ordered? Um, I've ordered a ham and cheese toasty, I'm still on this diet that I've been on, I've lost about 17, 18 pounds, you know, so kind of, uh, it's work. These meal preps that you got me that have been on. So obviously we can't get a meal prep here today, but it's got a toasted sandwich, about 350 calories in, so that'll do. And I've brought, or you brought, one prep meal with me that we'll have tonight before I go on stage. So you've got to think all the time when you're on the move, sometimes you forget where you're up to. If you're taking tablets and things, you forget to bring them. You've got to remember, right Dave, and remember all, all the time. Bring, whatever you're doing to yourself or with yourself, bring it along. Yes. You're gonna get those gains in, lad. What have you got? You've got to eat. A Mac Crispy. This is the thing about McDonald's, it's, it's on the go food, innit? Yeah. It's fucking heavy, it looks decent. I'll have you a chip get off your you. Have a chip, everyone. Get your carbs in. Well, at the moment, Jack's just trying to put a bit of muscle on, so. As you can see, I'm worried in case I can't, I've got to walk sideways to get through the door. Hmm. What have we got? Americano and a tea. Grab them for us, please, Dad. It looks heavy, that lad. I can't go to the gym. Let's give us a taste test. I can't get. Taste test? On the what? Chips or Yeah, go on. Go for the chips first. Nice and soft. I can tell they've only just been done. Yeah, they A certain. Um, Naples feel about the chips. <laughs> Very yeah. nice. Nice one, Dad. That my coffee. Uh, where's your... Are you getting a tea, Dave? Yeah. yeah. It'll come over in a minute, it's probably doing Have it. I got mayo on my face? Yeah, any, any good? Actually very good. Nice. Med dad, talking in. Now, well, every time I have a cheese sandwich or whatever, just the way I eat it, I'm eating it and it always stretches. And we don't want to say to Alan, didn't we get like half a million views? <laughs> yeah. Just fucking stupid. Just eating fucking sandwich. And we've just done one in a vlog that we did on the way to um, South Shields when we called in at uh, Weatherby Services. Go ahead, talk in. Hang on a minute. Any good? Oh. Lovely. Fucking great. I swear to God. You won't recognise me after about this, but after about this, all my hair is going to grow back. Nice. What's it like, Dave? Fabulous. Lovely. Good so. Quick taste test. Jack's going to put it on. For a sec. Well, I've got chicken and bacon here. What's it saying? It's leaving a little bit cold. It's a bit cold. Mm. But it's half decent. Yeah. All we wanted. Something to build you up on the road. Back on the road for another hour. 
feeling good. Let's have a go with the coffee. Black Americano, extra shot. It's okay, it's decent to be fair. Gonna talk into this, catch you on the other side. All done, feeling good? Feeling great. On our way now, and uh, I think we've probably just got about an hour left, is it? An hour and 20, how did it go down? Nice, nice, you know, just kind of, just enough to make you feel kind of like, you know, satisfied, so brilliant, great. Nice. And uh, we're on our way now, another hour, another hour or so. Let's get moving then. Yeah. Obviously, we're totally unfazed walking around with the camera, but you do get mad clocks, don't you? People think, what's he up to, you know? The, the crazy clocks we're getting. Another hour, another service station. We are at Jeff Hurst's second goal. AKA another burst. I think we've only got half an hour left, 20 minutes or so. Yep. So, uh, I'm, believe it or not, I'm the one that's weeing all the time because we've got like prostate problems. But Will wanted to come here and I'm, I feel okay. But, but if you've got any problems with your bladder or your prostate, put your liquids down. Now, I've just come up with a great idea while we're here. Well, obviously, we're selling out. We're very, very busy all over the UK and uh, it's very, very difficult to either get a ticket or to book the show. Yeah. So, whilst we're going out as, obviously, the show, me and you, yeah. you can book either of these men as a Frankie Allen and Will Cranny tribute <laughs> act. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? Young Dave and Jack Bryan. <laughs> what do you reckon? Yeah. You, you and four, you and four. <laughs> Just look at this man, the way he's decked out. You can't beat it. He looks fucking class. Now, the last time we were in the service station, Dad, isn't this, this where we met that fella from Hull? Or am I going the wrong way? No, no, you're talking about the wrong way. The last time we were in the service station, we met a fella from Liverpool that runs a gym on Long Lane. Oh, go on. By, uh, yeah, you know, Long Lane in Liverpool, yeah. Um, if you remember, he was going somewhere. Good lad, yeah. Second coffee of the day. Actually, it's my fourth coffee of the day, I think. It's my third, I think. Now, I can't believe that we've actually been in the gym this morning, haven't we? Yeah. I'm feeling good, we got right a sauna. Early sauna. Uh, what else did we do? Uh, we couldn't workout. do cardio because there was no treadmills next to each other, but we did a full push workout, which was good. And uh, Dave's going to get in the gym with us and show us a few things. And he, if you see the neck on this guy and the shoulders on him. Yeah. And unfortunately, my dad's in a snide gym in Whiston. I don't go to the gym, I just go to the sauna, the steam bath, have a little swim, that's all. Yeah. I've heard about those saunas. Well, you should know about saunas <laughs> if you've been a swinger. Yeah, he is. Goes to swingers, bars, clubs, and even does shows for swingers. It got cancelled, actually. <laughs> On the way to Birmingham, the 40s in the bar. My dad's in the passing. Four knees in the back. Young Dave. Jack Ryan. Straight from the 70s. On our way to Birmingham. To do a big match show. Yeah! Jack Ryan is on fire. Shadows are falling. He came here to play yet. Yeah. He thinks it's 1960. He looks like Austin Powers. His hair is dead old fashioned. He's got a hundred year old suit. And a pair of the time. And that's why I have a song. Yeah! We've arrived, we're here in Birmingham. It's fucking freezing here in Birmingham. The further south you get in this country, the colder it gets. It's fucking freezing and wet, and I've got no fucking air, so I'm cold. Mm. That's a sick crossing chain, that, you know. I know. I'm into it. In case we bump into Dracula in one of the clubs. Yeah. yeah. Arrived. This is Paul, he's the promoter of tonight. Top man. 
Frank, what are you up to here? Just signing these. Uh, what are these for? The, the metal things. On, so what, what do you do with these? We just basically there to go into them. For oh, the is that what it is? Yeah, yes, and raffle them off. Nice. Then we, we put one on our wall. Look. Oh, and lovely. Everybody we've had. Oh, that's fucking great. All of these up here, soon to be added. The Frankie Allen road sign. Barry Fry. Yeah, what was you like? Good. I believe he's very funny and he He's like yeah. a comedian himself. John Gregory. Yeah. Gaza was good. So we've got all of our snacks here. Paul's kitted us out. Ray, and Ray um, Paul is very good. I've worked with Ray. Good. So we better go and get sorted. Fordy, Fordy's putting the bruise on. Appreciate it, mate. And then go get oh, settled. If so if you see Stuart running around, we've got a little mouse. Oh, oh go on. No, seriously, he's in. He's, he, he goes up there. Will. His mouse is in there. We're backstage. For the last little period of time, we've been doing our sound check and getting sorted. My dad's here, young Dave, Doug Carter in the building. Hello. We've got Jack Ryan on the buffet. On spring rolls. Getting involved in the spring geese. And uh, talk to us about it, Dad. How are you feeling? Yeah, God, it's great. You know, I mean, Paul, when we arrived here, very hospitable, great lad, made us feel very welcome. Lovely to see Doug again. And they're a great comedian, he's gonna smash it tonight, I'm sure. He doesn't live too far from here, it's only like 25 minutes from his house, which makes a change, because he's like me, he goes all over the UK. Tonk, tank, tonk. Tonk, it might be tonk. Tonk, I thought it was. Yeah, I've met Tonk before, when we did a show in Reddish Theatre, and he was there just kind of like uh, in the crowd, but I remember him coming up for a picture at the end. Great lad, a good lad. He's a pro boxer and he's a good lad. And Sonny's a handy lad as well. So there shouldn't be any trouble here tonight, touch wood. Should be a great night, spoken to everyone. The DJ's a good lad. So getting a really good vibe from this. I'm sure we're gonna smash it. Um, all the old team are here. Um, Dave's eating all the food like the fucking kooky monster again. <laughs> so uh, there'll be nothing left as usual for anyone else. But I'm on a special diet and I brought me uh, my food here to be microwaved. Same as Will. So we'll get back on you in a minute. But up to now, no problems at all. Great venue. It's good to see this fella here tonight. He's opening up. Hello. Feeling good, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'm fucking looking forward to it. I think this is the third one I've done for you now, isn't it, Frankie? Yeah. And yeah. I've had two bangers, so I'm ready to have one where I die on my ass. Maybe this will be that one. Certainly not. Nah, it's, the oh, room's I'm wicked, isn't it? Everybody knows I always say this on a lot of vlogs. There's a lot of rivalry all over the UK. You know, you've got Newcastle and Sunderland, they teach each other. Blackpool and Preston, Liverpool and Manchester, Chester and Wrexham. Um, even when we went to Lincoln, Lincoln and Norwich ate each other. So, Doug, are you as a commentary lad, are you okay? Is there any rivalry with Birmingham? No, not really. Not really. Fucking, I mean, I'm a, I'm a sky blue, mate. Um, I'm not really into football because we're yeah. fucking shit. But Birmingham fucking lent us their ground, so you know I've got a lot well, of respect you can't for them. Playing, can you? Nah, and and I, I do a lot of my practice gigs in Birmingham, so I've got yeah. close connections with these people. They're sad, apart from yeah. the way they speak, the weirdos. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. my dad, my dad, and, and I always say that when we go around the UK it's always nice to be able to tap into the local culture so if you bring along somebody to open up on the show who is local to the area even if they're not exactly from the area it shows that you know we're, you know, we're uh, accommodating and we're, we're trying to make sure that how, how would you describe it? Well look we, we don't do it on purpose we don't try and kind of like recruit local acts to make kind of like what's the word ingratiate ourselves with the local crowd we pick good comics yeah you know for different venues for different jobs where we think it'll work with them and uh, doug's a busy lad he's been very busy because he's popular so we were lucky to get him tonight and every time we work with him he smashes it so and, it, and it's it's just kind of like the throw of the dice you never know where you're gonna work how far you know sometimes you can get a job it's 200 miles away from your house 
other times you can get a job like Dougie's got it like 20 minutes from the house you just don't know so it's it swings and roundabouts but we're really looking forward to a great night tonight here in the Midlands in the heart of the UK yeah so I just want to have a quick chat with Doug about the Frankie Allen audiences in general because he's witnessed two now and the first gig you probably didn't know what to expect you've got a bit more of an idea of what that type of crowd is now I was shitting myself I'm not gonna lie because I know that they're I mean I'm uh, Frankie's the sort of act that fucking he goes into the crowd whereas yeah. me I do material uh -huh. and I'm only just starting to learn to go into a crowd but gigs like this are kind of training me to be able to do that you know and yeah. I've noticed over the last two that I've been getting a bit more a bit more fruity with an audience and I'm not scared to go into one whereas before I used to get a little bit scared but it's watching him and the way he does it it's sort of like you, you pick up little bits from it don't you so I like these kind of audiences as well because like, I'm working class as fuck and yeah. these people they're my people do you know what I mean my people oh 100% Dave pleased to be in Birmingham ecstatic mate as always mate I mean I've got some family ties down this end and uh, they're great people and uh, I've just had a look out front and uh, it's a great atmosphere already. It's going to be a great night. Yeah, it's a little bit of an earlier kickoff on a Friday. We often have venues that will say to us, can you open the doors at 7.30 on a Friday purely because they want um, you know, to give the audience time to get home and get ready and get sorted. But 6.30 doors this evening, I don't know how the fuck people have got home from working time. <laughs> but the show will start at about 7.30. Glad to be here, excited to be here. You know, it's interesting because my dad was talking earlier about rivalry around the country and different working class areas and different posher areas and all the rest of it, but Birmingham, much like any major city in the country, Liverpool, Glasgow, wherever it might be, um, you know, they're all great places. All I need now, everything's fine, we're ready to go. I think Dougie's on about 7.30, quarter to eight maybe. Oh, sorry, Will will be on first, obviously it's about 15 minutes. Bring Doug on, then I'll be going on. But I'm fucking starving, need something to eat right now. Meal preps. Go and get on it. Right, people, let's go show you the room. Obviously, we've got our lovely dressing room here. Well, that's if you'll probably be. Hold on a minute. You haven't heard this man sing, though, have you? Ah. Now, you won't know this, but. Can you explain about how class of a singer Young Davis? Fordy blows the roof off <coughs> like venues yeah, going around. It's fucking singing. unbelievable. Now, you might be shocked here. You might be shocked, but Young Dave is a classically trained opera singer. He's outrageous. Are you ready to give us a go, Dave? Oh, look, we throw to the crap. It's always been as a lady here as well. <laughs> oh, let's just go. Unbelievable. Well, I'm going to tell you, Paul Will. Yeah. <laughs> Live reaction to that. Unbelievable. She's shocked. Yeah. Very good. She's shocked when you go. Dave, I have to admit that is fucking incredible, you know. <laughs> it's all down to like a set of bellows where you're trained, where you open your head, the hole in the middle of your head you imagine you've got. But to sing very loud is one thing, but to sing very softly is a lot harder. So to go just like <laughs> to go from that to that, like a B flat down. It's incredible that you know. And that's sitting down. Hold on, so we're just chilling, chilling backstage here, and Doug's just said, go on. No, he said it. He said, <laughs> he said that if he that told us that he used to be a dancer, would you believe him? And he used to get called Antonio Banderas. <laughs> yeah, so are you going to show us did. this pic? I'm going to get the picture up now and I'll fucking prove it, man. You stay there. This I was actually in my dancing clothes here as well. I was a dancer on the rave scene. For what do you mean a dancer on a rave scene? I was at a drum and bass club. I yeah. was the guy that used to get on the podium and start the fucking party. Everyone would turn up and stand around the edge and then I'd get up on the podium, start dancing and then the fucking party started. Okay. Mate. Just yeah. when you got up on the podium? Yeah, and when I got up, that's when the dance floor fucking filled, mate. Trust me. Try it tonight. Honestly, I had my, the best time of my life and I caught some of my favourite diseases back then. What, what yeah. like? Flimidia, gonorrhea. Gonorrhea was the worst. It was like green custard coming out of your knob. Ah. Tasted fucking horrible. <laughs> Here you are. There you go. There's him back in the day. Here you are, Looking look. slick there, Jack. You on him? Here you are. Okay, now. That's when I was a dancer. Oh, you were a little bit. <laughs> We've just been talking then. <laughs> we were talking about um, Doug. Obviously, you've seen the pictures. 
was dancing on the drum and bass scene. So, tell us how that comes about in the first place. Well, there was a club called the Coliseum in Hillfields in Coventry, which yep. is a rough area in Cov. And there was a night called Bass Odyssey, and there was a guy who used to turn up. Uh, this is back in the mid '90s, I think it was, and he used to be in a Predator outfit, and he, he was come down from Newcastle. And me and my mate used to get peeled out our nuts, and we'd get on stage and just start dancing. And then one day he dragged me into this side room, and he went, "Listen, it takes me a while to get down here. Do you used to want to get the party started?" I was like, "Yeah, sound." So we just started jumping on stage and dancing before he turned up, and then he stopped coming, and we carried on doing it. But the guy who ran the club uh, the base odyssey nights he turned around to me this one night and he went do you want a job dancing i went yeah son. so i just started like fucking dancing and i'd get me bits and bobs in for free without having to hide it and that because obviously i didn't get searched when i went in and yeah i did that for about fucking two maybe three years and then did a few other clubs around the country. We made Man Paris, uh, one of the first ever MCs on the drum and bait, well, on the rave scene. He'd get us into clubs and he'd be like, just jump on stage and start dancing. So, yeah, I've been on the stage. When you say dancing? Yeah, like, tr trigger finger and that. That's what I'm curious about. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm, I'm being deadly serious. Like, what type of dancing gets a drum and bass crowd going? What do you mean by dancing? Nah, just fucking wobbly legs, trigger fingers, and stinky shit face where you're like, I'll just go yeah, on for it basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like, I'll just, fucking come I'll on. Just add, I'll just add the moves. I've still got the moves for a fat lad, but. Class? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was the time of my fucking life, mate. Belter. How, yeah. old, how old were you about that time? I started when I was about 19, 18, 19. Yeah, I started raving when I was 15. But when I got heavily into it, I was 18, 19, and I'm still fucking raving now, and I'm nearly so, 50. So, let me ask you this question. So, obviously, you, you've been doing stand-up now for five years. Mm -hmm. How Did that period of your life where you were getting, like, the attention on the stage and, mm -hmm. uh, and being up in front of people, one, does that, has, was that kind of like a seed that grew into this, what you're doing now, and two, does it make you feel more comfortable when you first started doing comedy because you'd already done no. that? Didn't even translate at no, all? No, not at all. Okay. I was off my fucking tits when I was on stage. <laughs> Didn't give a shit about Fair anyone right. and all I wanted to do was dance. Whereas stand up, I was scared of being behind a microphone in front of a crowd because I was straight and I'd just sweat and shake and it yeah. took about a year in fact, I was writing for 10 years before I started doing stand-up because I was scared of getting up on stage. Fucking <laughs> petrified. And then when, uh, one day I just thought, you know what, fucking go for it. So I went for it. I was having panic attacks. I, was, I ended up on tablets to fucking try and calm the panic attacks down. The and panic attacks in general life or when you're going to go on stage? Going on you stage. Mean, okay. If I had a gig, I, I'd fucking... When I booked in, 2018, January, I booked in. And I booked in in December and I started having the panic attacks. So I started having the tablets. Mm. Did my first gig and for the first year I was on propanolol trying to calm the panic attacks yep. down and now I don't need them and I only really have panic attacks now if I'm fucking stressed or anything um, so I don't really have them now but mm. it took years to get over I had to fight a massive fear to get up there on stage yes yeah. hard man well obviously there's, there's a few people in this room myself we've got Jack here we've got my dad chilling over there young Dave's done some bits on stage as well and Doug obviously you're in a position where you've decided just five years ago fuck it i'm gonna have a go at it. Fuck it there will be someone watching this yeah that needs that fucking shout to be like listen i was a massive fucking scumbag i shouldn't be here now i fucked up at school i fucked up my whole life and then one day i thought you know what i'm chasing this dream so if you've got a fucking dream chase the fucker because i'm telling you i'm having the time of my life at the minute and you can too you've just got to fucking believe in yourself and fucking go for it so go for it you prick there you go Frank, just following on from that, I mean, yeah. you know, you've been doing it a long time since you were about, what, 18, 19? So, 19. you know, we're all in this position yeah. here because we've decided to take a chance on something. So, anything that you want to take? Well, I just it? kind of uh, totally agree with what Doug said. I couldn't have said it any better myself. If there's a chance, you know, you'll never walk alone. You know, you've just got to say to yourself, <coughs> walking through a storm, going through a bad period in your life, financially, we've all been there. Uh, emotionally some you know as well broke your fucking heart whatever you're going through you can get to the other side and look at Doug turned his life right around 
and uh, working now he's all over the UK doing fantastic brilliant comedian on with me tonight Frankie Allen and uh, what can I say he's living proof of what you can do and uh, make, he's making money as well making money as well with something he loves doing and he enjoys he thought to himself one day people have said to me you're dead funny Doug you should be a comedian he tried it out he's had his ups and downs obviously when he first starts out it's not an easy thing to get into but he's coming through now and he's well on his way so turn your life around listen to Doug what is it lad? David Ford <laughs> alias Fordy was a legendary figure in the annals of Merseyside law revered for his captivating performances at the infamous that, Don Luigi establishment is that on Wikipedia? yeah renowned for his entertaining <laughs> entertaining flange <laughs> Fordy was not just a man of charm, but also a figure of fear in the region. Fuck hell. Uh, <laughs> he's a bad man back in the day. One second. His reputation as a formidable hard man, not to be trifled with, earned him the status of a notorious figure. Crossing paths with Fordy was a risk you dared to take, as his presence alone was enough to instill apprehension. Fuck hell. I couldn't blow a dart, never mind the punch. Um, what do you have to jack money? <laughs> <laughs> what do you oh, think I don't know what to say, it's fabulous. That, yeah. What do you think of that, Don? Well, 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 you must have been inspired by something, mate. Well, I mean, thank you. You didn't even know Mike was the Don, man. You didn't know Mike Oh, no, was he's there. nicknamed the Don, mate. That's Is it? Young Dave, well, aka the Don. Well, that's alright, because my son's middle name is Don, because I'm, I'm half Sicil Sicilian. Isn't that funny? Mm. My, one of my dearest mates, Georgie Nick, his mother's side with Sicilian. Mm. Forget about it. Yeah. Oh no, you haven't seen it, have you? What? This man here does the most incredible Godfather impression. Oh, I'll have to get into it. <laughs> am, am I right, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what My friend. Then I will see you. <laughs> what I've ever done to take you things. I want responsible people. Give it to the man. Fucking incredible, that. Incredible. Seriously, boys, live reaction to that. Oh, that was fucking quality. Yeah. Took fucking right quality. Back. Yeah. No. It's fucking incredible, isn't it? You'd I think. Like taking someone out to the desert and burying them. You'd think that was Marlon Brando. You would think that was genuinely. What do you think about that? Well, I've seen it many, many times and it's always. Uh, always captivates you. I mean, it's a very, very good impression. And uh, of Marlon Brando in The Godfather. And uh, just to update everybody, uh, Dave will tell yourself, I think they're bringing another Godfather. Filming another Godfather 3, is it? Four. Four, four yeah. Nice. Um, uh, well, I, I don't, I'm still there, uh, I'm more than what Jack wrote. <laughs> now Dave, tell Doug who Jerry Vale is and why you might recognise him. Yeah, he was Sinatra's favourite singer. And he Sinatra's favourite singer? And he also sang in the films Casino and in Goodfellas. Mm. Can I see me? Yeah. Just Google him, he was in Casino and when they're all in the Copa. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's pretend you know. Fucking, I love this green road, man. And, and, uh, how did you find out you were Sicilian? My mum shagged a Sicilian geezer. <laughs> chip shop owner. How did you do? <laughs> chip shop owner. He was. First things I ever said to my dad was, can I have a chip batch, please? When I went <laughs> in the chip shop, I did, yeah. And then when I give him, I says, yeah, hey, I'll need to speak to you. I give him my phone number and that. And then uh, he sold the chip shop. <laughs> Yeah, is it classic?
all sorted you've seen the room it's looking tidy slim lad vinnie is here we've got some mega fans in the building who's slim line vinnie well, slim lad vinnie he's been to uh, one of our shows in redditch he came to the show in stoke with his mate at the front if you oh, remember, remember him. yeah of course he was at the show in canic um, he comes to a lot of them, he's a big fan and uh, fan, he's yeah. a top lad as well so looking forward to speaking to him after the show today. Brilliant. Yeah, so looking good Dad, you excited for it? Thank you. Very excited, uh, what time is it now? <laughs> Half seven, so we're delaying the show by ten minutes mm. at max and then uh, yeah, gonna absolutely smash it to bits. Doug, are you feeling good? Sucking himself up, I'm getting for this shit. Let's have it. Yeah, the room looks fucking mint doesn't it? Yeah, it looks mint. good. I like you. A couple of star jumps should be good. But you have many different star jumps. I mean, we'll do them every morning. Oh, we do them every yeah. morning, yeah. I'm not fucking built. I'm, I'm, I weigh as much as the pair of you fuckers. <laughs> fucking hell, I, I can eat you. I can use you as a toothpick. Do you think fucking you could lift me up and will up in that arm? No, no. no. <laughs> I'm not strong. I'm just fat, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Jack, you know what we were talking about? about the gym. Fordy actually does exercises on couches, don't you, Dave? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, the, go on. He calls it dynamic. It's a dynamic tension training. It's isokinetic. What the Germans did in the prison of war camps, they used furniture and stuff like that to exercise. Fucking and quality. Look at this, like Rose off the Titanic. Paint me, Jack. Very quiet tonight, Dad. You feeling good? I'm just quiet tonight. I had a bad night last night. Woke up at four in the morning, couldn't get back to sleep, so just a bit done in, a bit tired. As soon as you get on stage, you'll be feeling oh, good, though, won't you? The adrenaline, yeah. Love it. That'd be great. Do you want to do it now? What's happening? Are we all alright? Yeah. Are you looking forward to seeing Frank Yellow tonight? Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Before we kick things off, I go all over the country with this show. We were in Manchester last night, London last week, Newcastle, Glasgow, all over the fucking place. Hey, girls. You don't mind me talking about your talk, do you? Hey, girls. I'll be careful talking while I'm on, you know. First of all, what's your name, love? Go on talking. It's not you, it's not love. What's your name, love? Come on. What's her name? Her name's Lisa. Okay. First of all, does anyone in here know who I am? Give us a big cheer if you know who I am. If you don't know who I am, give us a big cheer. And for everyone who doesn't know, I am also Frankie Allen's son. Just in case anyone wants to start talking or heckling while I'm on, Lisa, you will be first on the fucking list, look. Do. Brilliant, oh, smashed great. it a bit. Sonny, you got to give that reaction to the camera, didn't you? What did you say? That was Absolutely. fucking amazing. Fucking amazing. Thank you. Very Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Brilliant. you. You do very well, mate. A career, a big, huge roll. Cheers. Cheers. Done great. Live reaction. Tell us about it, mate. That was fucking amazing. I walked out there and I was thinking, oh fuck. What if there's a group of women over on the left hand side that are just fucking cackling wenches but they were actually all right and the rest of them are just fucking proper up for it and that that was wicked man well done mate wicked well Thank done you. it was interesting because obviously i brought doug on and those girls were talking at the front and the left yeah yeah i thought okay are they going to be a problem right through? Is that what you're yeah, thinking? Yeah, are they going to yeah. be a problem right through? Should we be weird? You sound weird? I think what I had to do was just be louder than them. Yeah. Which was fucking yeah. hard because there was ten of them. So <laughs> were they still talking while you were yeah, on? Or, okay. Yeah, all the way through. And there was a couple of points when I when I went into them, they sort of slowed down a bit and then they just started again. No but do you know what? It weren't about them. It was about the rest of the room. The rest yeah. of the room were fucking into it. And, and they, oh, it was fucking class, mint. Class, class. Well done, mate. Proud Thank of you. you. Thank but, you. But, interestingly, from, the, from me watching the room and watching yeah. the reactions, I was laughing my head off myself. But I, I couldn't see any point where I thought those girls were talking. Now, I'm on stage and I'm going, I, they were annoying me a Could little bit. Could you hear them? 
But I couldn't hear them when you were on. Because I was, I, I out fucking louded them. Yeah, oh, fair play. I made a point of going up an octave in, in my level of yeah. talking like, which is sometimes what you've got to do, isn't it? But the one. this man over here ain't going to have to do that because he'll just go in balls deep with them. <laughs> so, Dad, great compliment to the show so far. Doug yeah, smashed it. So, are you feeling good? I mean, I couldn't, I got down the corridor a little bit, but I couldn't go out in case anyone saw me, but we were getting huge laughs, it was great, brilliant. Cool, excited to get on now. You're looking well, by the way. Yeah, well, Dapper. lost a bit of weight. Um, yeah, I'm waiting to get on. I mean, I've just been outside, I had a look outside, a lot of people are outside smoking and things, but it's all about, it's not about egos or being a prima donna or thinking you're this, thinking you're that. On the show, on the night, we all have to row together, all work together. It's not a competition to see who goes down the best. Dougie done well, and obviously he's broken the ice, which can be very, very difficult. The hardest <laughs> job, really, breaking the ice. Who's first on? So you done it, Will. You kind of dampened them, you know, kind of softened them up, I should say, for Dougie. And it's, I think it's just right for me now. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, what we're trying to do, and we always say this right across the board, is deliver a, a fantastic night's entertainment to everyone. And, uh, you know, however that's done in whatever way, shape or form, we get it fucking done. Yeah. And by the end of tonight, the roof's well, going to be torn we've got off, a great, uh, We've got a great show. We're doing well all over the UK, very popular. It's in demand. So we put 100% into it. I know Doug is like me as well, and like himself. Doug's on stage, I know he puts 100% in. Some characters, you know, some comics are just kind of half-hearted, but, you know, you only get out of it what you put in. And uh, we're putting, all of us are putting a lot in tonight. Someone said to me early on, well, if you look like you don't want to be there, the audience won't want to be there. So you've got to project that out onto them. And yeah, yeah, when yeah. I was up there, the minute that first joke lands, it's like, fucking... It's game on. on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know if you noticed, I was up and down the stage, like, yeah. trying to make everyone feel a part of it and That's it was right. and they were and well you could see on your face that you were enjoying it and yeah, you're going yeah. this is fucking sound this yeah, yeah. i mean it's weird because obviously you know we all work in different situations with different people and doug's on the comedy club circuit a lot of yeah, the time and stuff yeah. like that and i think people have like this perception of frankie allen audiences where they're going to be like some big fucking mad loud yeah, well, like to be honest i on the circuit i'm on yeah. normally you have to tone down a little bit and yep. like I, I do the material that I do there but there's some jokes that I can't do on that circuit that I can do with Frankie and it's yep. like I like letting loose. It's taking the shackles yeah, off a bit. Yeah, yeah, on there I've, sometimes when I'm taking swear words out and this that and the other in my head I'm going ah whereas here it's like fucking I'm just releasing the fucking cracker man and it's mint. Game on, right let's go and smash the rest of the show. Feeling good, Dad? Just gonna have a little peep outside, see if there's still a lot of people out. Or you can go and have a look, yeah. see what it's looking like. You. Thanks, mate. And uh, we'll get it moving. Okay. How are you, Jackie boy? Good lad? Fucking chilled out, mate. Yeah. Ready to get me down on stage? You feeling good? Uh, feeling sharp, feeling great. Uh, it's gonna be a great night. Good crowd. Off we go. Here's the, the godfathers of uh, the tour. Stage most Mr. Frankie Allen! Yeah. And the message is Danger Mouse is looking everywhere for you. I'll put back your cross eye cones. You alright, mate? Stand up a minute. You alright, mate? Listen, I've got a bit of good news for you, mate. We're going to find out tonight who pushed it off the wall. Come on, Cheers, lads. Uh, nice one, Sonny. It's good, that one, eh? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thanks, brother. Like what do you think? Live reaction? Brilliant. Yeah? Brilliant, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was brilliant. I thought you felt really relaxed. Yeah. I thought you were spot on. Doug, was the first time you stayed behind post <coughs> after... What I really liked was, was how you, at some points, <coughs> laugh yourself yeah. at what you're saying. And it's from the audience's facial reactions that makes you piss yourself. Yeah. And then that just makes them more into it. it was, oh, it's fucking yeah, no, fun, no, no, no. man. Really enjoyed it, it was sound. Yeah. 
I mean, even Jack was saying, Jack, he was saying my dad was really casual there, quite like, he, he, he just kept saying he's really sharp. Yeah, you're on fire. <coughs> Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were quick. They were loving it from beginning to end. Yeah. Yeah. Proper into it. Mate. Dave, good oh, stuff. I just thought it was great, mate. Uh, I was just saying, he's, he's had like Jack Benny tonight, but there is what I call a Frankie Allen crowd as well, very receptive, and it was just fucking, it was on fire. Boss. Feeling good then, Dad? Yeah, I thought it was great. Can't wait for the second half now. Hold on, Sonny's just said something lovely about me, Dad. You said, go on, you can even say it to me if you'd like. I said, for somebody to come out and build a relationship with that many people in the audience and remember them. Comedians come out, they pick on that person, that person, that person. But me now, as a member of the audience I'm working here, I remember you got three foot stumpy, you got the hundred year old man, you got a chatterbox, yeah. you got the scrubber, you got the bin one, and you got, no, this, yeah. you got a horrible cunt over there. <laughs> yeah. Tom Davis! So it's nice to know he's built that relationship. When he comes you back out now, I know exactly yeah. who he is. He knows who he is. Yeah. It's going to be a great fucking night. Tom Davis, Thanks, thanks mate. <laughs> My dad's smashing it, but we think 40. He's gone missing somewhere and we don't know where he is, so let's find out. What's happening? Just wondering where you'd gone. Well, sorry, I was just having a gap with Abby, just telling about Abby's a Oh, quality. And uh, I'm just a quiet shy cancer who doesn't bother with anything. Keeps his head down and I'm a fucking terrible liar. So, <laughs> yeah, and go fuck yourself. Oh, go, ah, now, especially like today. That's a classic, yeah. Will. Yeah. If ever it was like, uh, face like an elephant's knee, go fuck yourself. That for me and the guys is our rallying call. Like, you've got to get up early if you want to fuck with us as well, by the way. Jack, Jack, have you heard that? What? Fordy told you earlier about. His rallying cry, which is, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. yeah. No, but the best one was, was a <laughs> idiot. <laughs> yeah. And so, so I, I, I'm only seeing Will, it was like, sort of like that. And I just come out with this as I do. I just said, Will, you've got to get up early if you want to fuck with us. <laughs> now, Abby won't have, it is Abby, innit? Yeah. yeah. Abby won't have heard this. But Dave is often coming up with gags. You'll have seen this on the YouTube channel. Dave is quality at coming up with one-liners, such as you've got a face like a elephant's knee. Elephant's knee. Yeah. But Jack, Jack did a couple of his jokes in Preston. Ah. Shut up! Yeah. Shut up! And that classic. Yeah. Bit. What about the one I came out with today in the car? She was that fucking ugly. She was a black hussy. The lights and refused. Hey, I don't know how you come up with these. Oh, hey, hey, you, corduroy hole. You've got a face like a broken radiator. No, listen, let me just incredible. have a shut up one. Come. Right. Hey! Shut up! Yeah. Is that, is that good enough? That's alright, Jack. Well, even better, if it's a lady, you go, uh, you remind me of that comedy show, your legs open all around. Yeah, quality. Hey, shut up, Abby, have a go at it. Go on, just, hey, shut up, go on. It's just too ladylike. Yeah. What you all been doing? Anyway, so. And you don't know Dave, more. Dave, I like the saturated twat one. Oh, you? that one was the best. Huh. Hey, you, you saturated twat. <laughs> yeah. Some You're of about the... as funny as a fucking roller blind. <laughs> so that was the one. You've got the personality of the inside of a ping pong ball. Yeah. Guys, I'm not being funny. There's a show going on out there. We better get out there. Face like a mongoose's ass. God bless you, everyone. God bless you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, all the best. Have a safe journey home, all the better. Boys and girls, get on your feet and give it a one more time for the UK no speed comedian Frankie Allen!
absolutely cracking in tonight as I'm sure you've seen. Doug's first time sticking around for the full gig. Fucking hell, what an end to a show that is. Got chicken nugget in me, I'm sorry. That is a fucking wicked way to end the show and I tell you what, I'm glad I stayed till the end. That was wicked, Top man. man. Big thanks to him, he was fantastic tonight. Anyone who came along and saw him will be testament to that. Pleasure to have you on board Pleasure. again. Top really man, I'll be Thank seeing you him again so soon. Much. And he's got some samosas in his bag as well. I fucking up took a doggy bag, which is like a doggy bag, but bigger. Hey! <laughs> 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 Live reaction, how did it go? Fantastic, brilliant. I mean, you Jack, camera at the end, I think that's probably one of the best receptions we've had. Absolutely fantastic. Big shout out to all the lads working here, Sonny and Tonka. Been absolutely fantastic. You know, security, a couple of people, a couple of idiots got too close. One fella was pushing me, going on about his mate on a pub in Liverpool. So fucking rough, got him out the way. He fucked him off the boat, the two of them fucked him off big time, didn't you? Yeah. The lads have looked after as well, haven't they? Oh, they've been, they've been top class, fantastic. My mujer estará embarazada. Well, there you go. No, that means my wife is pregnant. Yeah, lost them. I tell you what, Abby. Before you go, you can be Desdemona, and I'll be, uh, I'll be. Uh, I'll be uh, go on. Yeah, that'd be good. Something to know. Something she knows. She's on my face and telling me that she loves me. <laughs> I'll sit on your face and tell you I love you. Oh, I love to be between your thighs. When I'm between your thighs, you blow me away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dave, that's a bell to that. Unbelievable, on, that. Uh, sorry about that. I just want to take my glasses off, really, because usually I'm going up there. Let me do that. Some quite happy. flange means. Class. Paul's put the show on tonight. Crack a night, mate. Great night. What a night. December. Go back. So, yeah, big thanks to Paul. Big thanks to everyone here. And uh, it's just been a cracker and a chat all round. It's been a brilliant night. Four D's just what ladies, what ladies been on next level tonight. Entertaining yeah. the, the people. Enjoy the night, man. Oh, mate, what a nice one. Night. So good, we booked again. No problem. No problem. No what are you up to there, Dad? <laughs> Sign and picks. <laughs> what a night, Dave. Oh, fabulous. It's been one of the best nights for quite a while. And it's up there with the best ones. This great crowd. Well, great people anyway. Great place for <laughs> Sign and more photos, Dad. Do you know what's strange is because the last time he was signed in autographs we were in Northern Ireland, you don't really get a call for it now, do you? But down here, do you love it? Well, we don't really do printed tickets at shows, do we? So, printed, true. printed uh... In that green room, that, that's another added little bonus. What you do in the green room with that camera, it fucking works. Oh, mate, it does. It works a treat. And, and what we what we always say is, I mean, have a look, Doug, when you've got any spare time, have a look at the vlogs we've been putting out. We've put four hours. I mean, on YouTube to get about 5,000 views of a, a video, which is which is great going, and um, people just become very invested in us as people and different characters in the story. And what I'm trying to do is create recurring characters that come throughout. But that's just to, obviously just to explain to everyone, anyone on the vlog, we're just catching up with Doug post show. Doug, what do you think of the show in general, mate? Fucking amazing, and mate, I'm, I've come home on cloud nine. I'm not going to lie, right? fucking rang my mate on the way home and I says there was this bit with this woman and I'm not going to give the gag away but a woman that was wearing glasses and he said this fucking line to her and the fucking room was in uproar at it and I told my mate about that and as I'm telling him over the phone he's fucking pissing himself at it quality and it, it was fucking wicked man I've, I've, I haven't drove home I fucking floated home. That was wicked. Brilliant. Dad, just explain to Doug. We were you, you and Doug were having a chat about the girls in, in uh, the corner of the room. Well, there's, there's a question for you, Doug. And I said this to Will a few years ago. I went to the club in Portsmouth. He'd let too many in. There must have been, you know, maybe 150 people in, in a room that was designed for about 70 people. It was just ridiculous. 
in the afternoon in the daytime he had the fucking windows open the sunlight coming in buses going past outside I had no chance at all and it, so I, there was a lot riding on it and I'm standing on a table in the middle of the room so I walked out and I started telling jokes and it was literally just like standing talking to a brick walls talking to your bedroom wall nothing at all so I said thought to myself there's no way out of this I've got to do at least half an hour 40 minutes and I thought what in the name of God can you do when you just cannot get orders so let me just ask you Doug what 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 do you think what do you think you could do I'll tell you what I did I'd imagined I mean for me I'd be just like I'd look at it as a take the money and run gig mm. and I'd plough through my material but I've got a funny feeling mm. you release the Kraken on them No, what you do you pretend that someone's kicking off on you <laughs> see yeah. shouting at a fellow in the corner who are you fucking talking to mate what, yeah, what, 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 yeah. what do you mean fuck off well, where are you from and obviously I found out you know, I won't mention it on it, but there's a <coughs> there's a town that Plymouth don't like. See, so I ah, said, so oh, you pick a rival area, rival area. You say, oh, you go in on so it. So I go, you know, whatever the fucking town is, say if it was in Chester or something, I'd say. So hang on, mate, you're coming all the way from fucking Wrexham, telling us what to do in Chester, because they hate each other, you see. But I've done it for yeah. Plymouth. Plymouth. Then it went quiet. Yeah, and then I said, yeah, give you, us a big cheer you if you're backing do. me up, where's all the Plymouth lads? And all of a sudden, I had them eating out my hand. Yeah. From a room, yeah. which to be honest with you, there was no way on earth that you could ever get them to listen. They were just totally gone. Pretending you know what? that there was a fight. Do you know what? It's funny you should say that, because I did a room a while ago. when I, I hadn't long started. And you know my joke about the sea bomb? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do it subtle at the start where I mention C-bomb and I don't say cunt, right? Yeah. But but this room, every act was struggling <laughs> because there was people eating in the room, there was people talking, and I could see them all fucking... They were faltering, all the acts. And then I thought, I know what I've got to do here. <coughs> so when they called me onto stage, I stood on stage, and the first word I said, at the, at the loudest I could say it was, cunt! Bosh, the room went quiet and they all looked at me and yeah. then I went, it's one of them words, isn't it? And that was it. I had them straight yeah, away. Yeah, so yeah. I fucking, I know, I know where you're coming from, mate. So, do you know what? I've learned a lot from tonight, mate. I've learned a lot from it. And you, you, yeah, you, you oh man, I'm just fucking buzzing off it, man. That was, so, that was a fucking so, you good know, night. As we said, as much as, uh, you know, people can, can be very highbrow and go, well, that's not proper comedy like at the end of the day you learn more on a gig like that than you do in 10 gigs in comedy clubs yeah of course you do. well a comedy club where they're sitting there listening you go through the motions yeah whereas something like that this is where you get fucking lead for skin this yeah. is where you <laughs> yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah, completely. do you know what i mean this this is where you you know look i think 90 percent of acts on the circuit couldn't do a room like that because of how raucous it is they couldn't and it's like the, the points, all out. Yeah, there was there was points in my set where I noticed that you've, you've not so much fighting a losing battle, but you've got 75% there that are interested, the rest are there to get wankered. Yeah. If you can get any point through your set where the room goes fucking silent, you've done your fucking job. Yeah, yeah. And there was a few points in my set where, don't get me wrong, I've got the laughs throughout, but there was a, there was a few points where I... I felt them listening to every word, not just 75%, 100%. 100% of them at points went fucking silent. And that, to me, is a winner in them sort of rooms. So, yeah, yeah, that was, it was, it was fucking mint. So, and I'm not just saying it because I'm on the phone with you. Thank you for tonight, honestly. Oh, I fucking, big thanks, mate, honestly. I had fucking fun, man. And I've come home with it's a massive doggy bag. It's what it's all about, isn't it, man? Having a good laugh. Probably. All right, fuck out. And tell your mate I said hello as well. Uh, and, and it was nice to meet him as well. He's here, Jack. Yeah, all right.
all right, tell him the truth, he's a cunt. Uh, <laughs> no, he's a fucking good lad, he's a good lad. Face like a revolving door, he yeah. Was like, he was like a cocktail of people that just made the cocktail taste sweet. It oh, was that's fucking oh, wicked. Top man, top man. Sweet Caroline. Great. Unbelievable night. For a little piss break before we get... What time is it now, by the way? The time is... It's 12.04, have you ever clocked that? Coming, what's going on? Are you coming in? You make great time here, bro. My you dad's desperate for a Jeffrey. Open the door for, uh, for the phone. <laughs> Thanks, my man. Dave? <laughs> <laughs> you look like the feather off Home Alone. <laughs> you said Joe Pesci. <laughs> Joe Pesci. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just arrived home. It is 20 to 2 in the morning. Talk to me about the show. Fantastic night. It was unbelievable. One of the best shows we've ever done. Everybody in the place was singing at the end. Everybody was on their feet. Um, just unbelievable. Dougie was great, our support comedian. <laughs> Paul and everybody down there really kind of like helped us contribute to a fantastic night, thousands, hundreds of thousands of photographs and security were brilliant. Uh, Sonny and um, Tonka, great lads, really looked after us and uh, thanks to Will for organising everything. So uh, I'm very, very tired. I think I've, have I been talking in my sleep? Uh, kind of. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so thanks to uh, Jack Ryan came along for the journey. He was off tonight, and uh, young Dave. So uh, two dons in the back. So we're going to get in and get a nice kip. Me and Jack are off to the gym in the morning. Big so, thanks to the people of Birmingham who came along to the show. It was fantastic seeing uh, you know loads of people laughing the night away. Great vibes all round, and good to have the lads with us. Enjoyable boys. Totally yes. unbelievable, fantastic night, night. Really and, uh, and once again, shout out to the biggest shout of all, Will Cranny, my son Will, what a genius, organised everything, organised the show, everything about the tickets, the venue, the security, everything, and drove us there and all that, so he, uh, top, top of the class once again. You know it, right, big thanks for watching people, catch you on the next one. Good night.